Good afternoon to the Barbados Beach House. How are you all? I think we're at a thousand and uh, thousand and seventy eight subscribers. So welcome. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Sorry, there's massive gaps in between videos, but as you all know now, we're pretty much done. We're just now creating more work for ourselves on stuff that doesn't need to be done. So welcome to everybody that's been um, saying hello over the last couple of weeks. Um, Brian and wife in the shop that I saw yesterday that are over here from Canada for four weeks. Hope you have a great holiday. Thanks for watching the channel. Um, Andy, you should be arriving today. It's Wednesday, yeah. You're arriving today and you're bringing me kitchen feet. What a legend. Shouldn't have to do that though, buddy. I'm sure your case is uh, rammed with uh, sun lotions and bikinis and stuff. And the last thing you want to be doing is ramming 30 adjustable legs for a kitchen into your case. But thank you anyway. And everyone else has obviously commented. Thank you very much. Um, okay, where are we at the moment? I'm going to give you a quick run around quick. Um, grab yourself a cup of tea, stroke coffee, whatever your medicine is. And I'll quickly walk you around and babble your ears off and uh, give you a quick update on what we've been doing in the last three, four, five weeks. And I'll also give you an update on where we're getting on with the pool. Um, before I carry on babbling off, if you don't mind, obviously hitting us with a thumbs up below, if you like the content that is. And uh, give me a subscription to the channel if you're not already subscribed so that you can get notified as and when I bore more details on the online about residential developments. Anyway, what have we got in the back garden? So let's start here. The back garden, we've actually got some grass pods. Still looking a little bit bare, but it was only done on Saturday. So we actually ordered in a hundred sheets of um, hybrid grass. So this is zoysia, as far as I'm aware, mixed with some form of golf grass. So apparently I should be able to chip and putt like I'm actually sitting on West Moorlands or Sandy Lane. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? So anyway, we've got the sprinkler systems in. They're not completely completed. Completely completed. Um, but at the moment we are watering when we can. Um, and uh, the hope is obviously these, are, these little pods that have been split up are all gonna land up matting into each other over time. And we'll have a lovely green grass lawn to sit on i wanted to go with astroturf as you know everyone said don't do it my wife said no you guys won so hopefully it's going to be better than idiot proof astroturf. the path is surviving nicely william and team great guys if anyone needs their numbers please let me know they're great lads they work like trojans they're not too expensive and they do good work so if anybody needs anything let me know our plants we've obviously got some plants along here as you can see they're all budding nicely as well as along here and again the plan is to put a green wall of plants there pink wall of plants there should i say not green but as you can see they've all taken quite nicely so far so we're going to put some time and effort into making sure that happens um we've got some stuff over from england charles and ivy um again nice um hopefully non-fading outside um, planters my wife is going to be putting some uh, rosemary and mint and spinach etc in a couple of them and the rest of them are going to be planters so that would be nice um, so looking forward to doing that the patio we've actually done a little bit more work on the patio we shaved back and we've re um, sealed most of them we've still got to do a few more uh, but most of them are resealed now so that's now waiting for the next stage and the next stage as you know is going to be um trying to sand this whole floor down um, and repaint it somehow not too sure how we're going to go about doing that um the pool we still got the same problem with the pool no real change there let me show you the pool itself is uh, looking a little bit sorry for itself unfortunately with the pool itself as you know the pool tiles on this side won't lay properly so you can see where the line is there that creates the first issue we don't get any water running off the left side into that drain that is essential because it lands up pulling the water from the swimming pool here into the drain which means it recirculates around and around it does it on the back absolutely brilliant although it doesn't do it on the corners and this side does it great as you can see these two tiles i've laid two tiles down on top to see if i actually put another layer of tiles all the way along would it land up bringing this side up with the same level as there and would it enable at least the pool to be roughly level on both sides to ensure that this one builds up it pushes the water over to that one so hopefully that one goes in the drain and this one goes in the drain that would be nice we've turned the pump up 
from 2000, I think it was 2004 to 2800, and we're actually getting some ripples on the top now. So the pump does work, but I don't think it's strong enough. The guys at the pool company say it is, um, but the three jets over there, as you know, we don't really get any current coming from them at all. Um, I need to get in there today and test it at 3000 to see whether I get jets coming out there. And then I think that will enable the water to move around to stop this black patching that we've got in the pool. As you can see, it hasn't got any better. Will it actually enable the black patching in the pool um, to cease? Or do we need to upgrade to a bigger pump? What's your thoughts, guys? Hit me in the comments below. A mouthful of coffee. So, at the moment, I think the black in the pool, I think, is just a lack of circulation with water. I think the tiles on that side, the infinity edge being bad on that corner, I really do think that's what's causing the black. So, we need to get the water circulating better. Um, and obviously the only way to get rid of that black patch now is going to be to empty the whole pool and resurface, unfortunately. I think that's going to be the only solution. So that's a real shame. Uh, but before I do that, I want to get the flow of water sorted first. Otherwise, we just throw money at a problem. Um, so yeah, as you can see, the water comes over these tiles nicely. And as you can see here in this light, these two tiles here now aren't getting water on them completely like over the road. Over the road. So... Um, I think if I put another row of tiles on top of here all the way along, then it may very well bring that one up as well. However, I think what's gonna happen is it's just gonna flow off the back. So either way, I don't think whatever I do is gonna solve the problem apart from starting again and making sure we laser the edge all the way around, which is obviously a big problem. The infinity edge itself obviously needs doing as well walk around there very quickly as you can see we've got water look loads of water here no problems at all but as you know as we get to here we start receiving that uh, dry patches and then to a certain extent we have nothing and that's because these tiles are too high and so is this piece here as well so obviously once you've actually got the edge lined all the way around we might be able to increase the infinity edge up as well to enable the pool to back up even more. We need the pool backing up in order to get the water going over all of the drains. And then once it's going into the drains heavily, then we'll know roughly how high to actually put this infinity edge. So um, if anything, I hope what you can take from this is that you really have to get a, the right pool guy on board. Um, and if the pool is quite complicated like mine, even more so, I mean, without being rude to the guy that did our pool, um, he realised how complex this was going to be, but I don't think he quite realised in detail. So um, where they went wrong, unfortunately, is they should have lasered the inner pool edge all the way around to ensure that the beginning of the pool was um, the same. But that really wasn't the essential part. The main essential part really was making sure they lasered the back edge of the tiles, i.e. this piece here. This bit this was the most essential part to get right and that needed to be lasered all the way around that way the tiles could have been that steep that steep that steep whatever the steep they needed to be as long as the back edge was the same that way the water would have backed up and gone in at the same time and then that way you, you the, the infinity edge becomes a dam the dam itself is holding it back you you take that dam up as high as you can until all of the drains around the pool are taking water at the same time once they're taking water, then you know the line that you're going to be doing on the infinity edge. But unfortunately, that was not done. So, hence the problems we are having. So anyway, a real shame, but I'm sure we'll at some stage with a bit more blood, sweat and tears and money. I'm sure we'll solve that. Um, where else have we been focusing on? It's really been the garden, the import, the pool. And now what we're doing is we're working on the barbecue. Now, do you remember I was actually going to build a barbecue? See the box here. So let me quickly show you what we're actually going to be doing. This is my thought process. I did show you guys before the actual barbecue setup I'm aiming to achieve. So what I've actually done in the meantime, again, if anybody's uh, looking for a barbecue, get your backsides down to uh, Pricemark. They've actually got these next grills in. So as a stainless steel barbecue, they're actually quite cheap. I think they're 16, 1700 Beijing for the whole thing. Obviously it'll have a stand underneath and it's got the two side bits, but I don't want it that, I want this piece. So what I wanna try and do is build a kitchen unit of two with the side, one underneath this one and another one on the end 
So it's a four piece unit on wheels and this becomes the barbecue top. And the side grill, which would normally bolt onto the side of the barbecue, this one here with an open plate with a grill, I will cut this into the worktop. Um, so we're gonna have a four piece with that in it and the worktop will come along and, and will line up against here. So obviously all you'll see of this barbecue is from here upwards and on the front you'll see these and then through this carcass here will house the actual gas bottle for the whole thing. On the left hand side, here somewhere, it'll have a Corian top all the way along and then there's a Corian sink that will go underneath as well. Now the sink won't have running water because it's gonna be on wheels and it's gonna be mobile. Um, but the whole unit, I will put a, a photo down in the uh, one of the corners here so you can see what I mean. I have showed you guys before. But this was my uh, this was my thought. The only thing I don't like, obviously, is from the back of the barbecue, you're gonna see the back of this. There's not really a great deal I can do about that. Um, it is what it is. So other than that, um, I think it could work. So um, we do have some materials here. We've obviously got the PVC sheets that we're gonna make the carcasses out of because obviously this is gonna be outside. I want no rot. Um, I don't want anything like that. So these are gonna, are gonna work out right. These are the 18 mil versions. And then we've got a Corian top, which is seven mil. Now at the moment, we have a, a bit of an issue with um, Coinman's, they've, they've got none in stock. So we're waiting for it to come in and the chances are we're probably gonna have to send this one back and get two new pieces because they need to be joined together. So it have to be the same color. Um, so that's gonna be any delay we've got. But what we're also gonna do once the four units are bolted together is to put one of these sheets all the way across the top and all the way down the sides and all the way across the back as well. So it lands up becoming one big plastic box um, housing, if you like, four plastic carcasses. And then obviously we'll make the doors. At the moment, the doors, we're, we're waiting for the spray guy to come back. We're gonna test a bit of um, moisture resistant MDF for a door. And we're also gonna test the uh, plastic as well. Ideally, we want plastic for obvious reasons. Um, but if it doesn't come out looking great, then we'll go ahead with um, the moisture resistant and make sure we seal it and lacquer it. So um, yeah, it'll have four doors on it. Again, I'll put the picture below. Um, and the other thing we're gonna be working on once we've actually done this, <clears throat> stupidly, is this big pile. So we've actually now got the uh, laminated um, outside wood for the garage. So they all come in clickable panels. Um, they have to be fixed, they have to be screwed onto the wall but then they actually go in and they click into each other and they hide the screws. So this is the color we're gonna be going for for the outside of the garage. When I say outside of the garage, I mean, we're literally gonna be cladding this whole wall here, all the way along, all the way up, all the way around, and all the way down. Now, what I've got to try and do is I've got, I've got I think the best thing to do is to go and get some marine ply and cut that into inch to two inch widths and obviously clad the wall um, horizontally all the way along. And obviously then the panels can go on, we can screw into the wood. So it does mean we're gonna have to obviously mount quite a few bits of wood on the wall, which is a bit of a time consuming exercise. Um, but we're gonna be doing all of this. And I've also bought this one here, which is an internal version of it. And this is gonna be going on the gray pillar wall inside the house. So we got our work cut out, as you know, and uh, once we've actually done those, then we need to know how much we've got left because we want to do the gates. You know we've got the wood that I've actually pre-cut. It's a very heavy, solid wood. That was our, that was our preferred um, material to use on the gate, and we still may proceed with that. But if I have enough left over of the, uh, the cladding we've got here, then I may do the whole gate. The only downside is it's on a sheet, which means the air can't flow through it. Um, and basically, if I do that, then I'm gonna turn this into a bit of a monstrous sail. So I'm very mindful at the moment, if we don't allow the air to come through here, then we could land up causing ourselves a bit of pressure on the gate from the wind. So I think we are better off using the wood that I had cut and cladding that um, individually, but it will be very time consuming, very heavy, and fixing it with stainless steel screws is gonna be reasonably difficult. Anyway, so that's where we are so far. So if you like what I've said so far, give me a thumbs up below. Um, we're going to build the carcass now. We've obviously got this. We know how big to build the carcass. So we're now going to build the carcass from a, working from the hot to top downwards. We know the top itself with the, obviously the, uh, the, uh, the Corian and the PVC is going to be 25 mil. We know the line that we're going to be aiming to cover on the barbecue. So we know we go 25 down, 160 after that. So we know the actual depth of, of that. Then obviously we, we know the height of the carcass. So we can now measure how much that carcass is left. We know the width of the carcass and the depth of the carcass. 
So we're gonna make that carcass and then we can bolt all four together. So as and when I've done that, I will check back in with you and give you an update and show you what we've done. Fingers crossed it goes to plan. Thanks for watching so far. Okay, welcome back. We can report on a bit of madness. So, the barbecue is going reasonably well. So I'm gonna show you the cabinet that we've actually made. And the cabinet is amazing. If it was 25 mil higher. <laughs> So anyway, forgive us, we don't do this for a living. But as you can see, it's coming together. It looks amazing. However, let me show you what we've done wrong. What I've done wrong. Sorry, Shelby. Okay, so we started off with the carcass that we've already made. As you know, we've made these um, out of PVC, 18 mil PVC. Uh, one, because of, um, in, if you, in case you don't know, here, uh, wood rot, termites. Um, plus, this is gonna be an outside barbecue, so I really don't want any form of um, rotting going on so 18 mil they do it in um 15 i think is it 15 12 isn't it 12 18 and 25 this is a 25 she's gonna go back i don't think we need that but i was gonna put that on the top but it's um overkill we don't need that so anyway, as you can see the barbecue fits absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant um this little controller here is where the battery goes in for the electric ignition. That will be um, drilled into the side, which we've got to work out how to do that. Bear in mind, the carcass is actually gonna be up here. So we've got to work out how to get this monstrosity. I need to see whether these clips come out, which I don't think they do, but if they do, great, I can feed them through. If not, then I'm probably gonna to have to do a slot from up here all the way down in this side carcass to slide that down in the inside. And then that will be mounted on the inside of the carcass like that. That is just obviously to this silver thing you take it off and inside there's a double a battery um, this obviously would do the same thing that will go into the carcass and in there obviously will house the tube the tube the tube and the gas bottle um, what we've done wrong here is we've actually calculated the height of this unit plus the, the work top which is going to be seven mil of corian and uh how much is it going to be? 15, 18 mil of plastic, 25 mil in total. So I've calculated it's 185 going down. What I haven't done is added 180, taken 180 off of this. So we're actually 160 on here. We've done 185. So I've gone down too bloody low. So I've now got to do two new sides and raise it and obviously sit that back on again. But as you can see, it fits in absolutely perfect. Hello. Hello. That's a friend, by the way. He doesn't know we're recording. So anyway, that's obviously gonna go, um, there's gonna be another carcass here and another carcass here. So I think you'll agree, it looks pretty good. The back is shorter, as you can see here, I'm trying to do it on camera. Um, so we'll build that out. The worktop will come up to the back of that, even though the carcass is not like that. And the other thing we've got to do is back here, we've actually got a tray. As you can see the tray, we're gonna to have to do a slot at the back so the tray actually comes out. Um, so uh, yeah, the, the actual oil tray that captures all the actual food and the oil will have to slide out the back. So we're gonna have to clad the whole of back of this up to here. And then we'll have to have like a little slot here where you can actually put your hand in and pull that tray out. So anyway, we'll leave, uh, really we should cut that one higher as well, really. How are you? So we're gonna have to really cut these higher and we really should be cutting that one higher as well, but I might leave that one as it is. Uh, anyway, as they say, Use your brain number one, and then measure twice, cut once. We did measure twice, we did cut once, but my brain wasn't engaged. Anyway, slate me in the comments below and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Good morning to, good morning? Yeah, morning. Morning to uh, day two. We checked off yesterday. Um, before I carry on gabbling, don't forget to give me uh, some love downstairs. Description and uh, thumbs up will be greatly appreciated. Where are we today? We're on the patio looking at that amazing, amazing site. Um, in the shade, not 100% shade. Still doing a great job by the way, guys. Um, we now have the carcasses up here. So we finally rectified my mistake and we tested it and it seems to work okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt these four units together to see how long they are. I don't want it too long, but I don't want it too short. Uh, and now we're putting the actual um, barbecue carcass in there. It's actually stretching it longer than an eight foot and I didn't want it longer than that. All of the sheets are 2,400, which are eight foot. Um, eight foot's a nice length, but obviously now we're putting that unit in there, which is, I think was 862 versus the standard 600. 
it's stretching it a bit further than I wanted to. So I'm gonna get it bolted together and get it upright and see what it looks like. Um, if it looks okay, which I think it will. It's in the wrong place, so I need to move it. Um, sure, I went done that. Um, we're gonna get it all bolted together, get the wheels on it, get it stood up and see what it's like. Off the back of that, if it's okay, then we're gonna get the rear piece put on to stabilize it. And then if that looks okay, then we're gonna get the top piece put on and the side bits put on. We need to do the wheels first, purely because we need to know how far down the actual sides are gonna need to come down to the floor as well as the rear. So um, yeah, first thing is gonna be bolt the four together, get the wheels on, get it up on itself, and then the rear and the sides and the top are gonna to be next. Um, obviously initially it's just gonna look like one big plastic white box, um, but that's just the carcass. We're then gonna put the corian around the whole thing, which will obviously finish it off. Um, and on the back, I'm gonna put some form of boarding on there and then I'm gonna put the wood clad on it, which again, I'll show you in a picture down here. So I think it'll look amazing. On that note, not sponsored by Devolt, by the way. Here's a clean t-shirt from yesterday because I've got a few. Um, this channel is not sponsored by Devolt. Devolt. Well, however, you could do if you want to reach out to me if you do. Anyway, enough said, let's get working and I'll update you as we go. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're completing stage one. The units are now all bolted together. Forgive me for them not looking absolutely perfect. I do need to actually pull these ones together a little bit further down here. So I'm gonna go around and make sure they're all done. But again, as you can see here, four bolts, four bolts, four bolts. Um, and basically we're using these here. These are actually by Hetch, Hetchich. So as you can see, they're like a, a male and female bolt and they go through the carcass like so. So it's better than screws. Yeah, they're bolted either side, but you do have to hold them tight and make sure they're pulled together, which we do need to do on the gaps. As you can see down here, there's a little bit of a gap there. That's okay, that's not too bad. So gapping is next to make sure that's all done. And then, installation of wheels. Okay, quick update. So the wheels. Um, in an ideal world, we want the wheels to be able to swivel around all of them so we can move the whole thing on its own through a 360 access. Uh, but unfortunately, the wheels that actually have brakes are on swivels, which is great. But these are a little bit more expensive because they have the brakes on them. But I think only Koimans do. The ones without brakes are just fixed. There's no swivel. So um, I'm not too sure how that's going to affect the operation. I think it's going to affect it quite a bit. So I think they're about 20, 25 beige and extra each. So I think I need to go and change the wheels. So let me quickly show you what I mean. So at the moment, we've not bought, you know, 10 wheels. We bought eight wheels and we were gonna put them out. Obviously, they're gonna to have to go on the edges to support the weight. So, you know, you're probably gonna land up having two on the outsides, two somewhere here. So ideally, something central. We have to have the locks at the front so we can actually lock it in place. Um, so it will probably be a case of, you know, maybe spreading them out a little bit more like this. Um, but obviously, the ends are gonna be very heavy. Um, at the front, we're gonna definitely gonna to need to have two brakes. So it's probably gonna be something like this. And a supporting wheel in the middle, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, as you can see, these ones aren't swivels, so it's gonna restrict the movement of the whole thing. So I'm gonna to have to change six of the wheels um, to the swivels. Some people might in the comments below saying, you don't need to do that. But, you know, it's just at the moment, if there's any wind and rain, I want to get out there and spin the whole thing around and put it straight away, rather than having to position it and then get it straight and push it. Um, and I don't think they actually do these swivels without the brakes, as I say, which is a real shame. Um, obviously, because we've extended this unit here, we, sorry, we've made this unit bigger to house the barbecue, we obviously have the issue that we've now gone over the eight foot mark, and that's the difference. So I've just screwed this into the back. Uh, we're gonna take from here down 15 inches. That gives us an inch of clearance from the bottom of the wheels to the top of the wheels. Um, and we'll get that fixed into the back hard. So that will then seal these units nice and solid together. And then we're obviously gonna have to cut an extra piece, unfortunately, to go on here. Uh, which isn't major because I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to put something with back. Um, I don't know what. They do a laminated sheet in um, in Coinman's. It's about 75 beige in a sheet. It's very thin and it's the same size as this 8 this eight, um, eight by 4. Um, the only downside is I'm not too sure how to cut it off. So we've got to take 15 inches off here. I'd have to do the same with the laminate. So if I found a black laminate that I can stick straight across the back, um, it will look nice, but I'm going to have to cut laminate. And laminate's a very brittle material i'm not too sure how to cut it i mean stanley in it maybe and does it snap um let me know in the comments below how to cut laminate um i'll i'll go to coimans in the next one i'll change these walls and maybe i'll see the uh, the sheets and then you guys can let me know down, down below um but i don't think you can cut it because it's very brittle i would have thought you can score it with a stanley and then snap it i would have thought let me know in the comments below because if i do buy it i'm gonna have to cut 15 inches off of it 
And all it is really is a back plate. It's just a back, one, it's to stabilize and, and further secure the stability of the, of the unit twisting. Uh, but it's also to create the back, um, I suppose, back plate view. Because when I put the laminate wood on the actual, um, on the plate itself, there's gonna be a, a gap of around about an inch to three quarters of an inch in between each slat. And I don't wanna see white and also I don't wanna spray it. So I thought the laminate, if we get a really nice gray or, or um, black laminate on the back, then we actually glue stroke screw straight into that and it obviously makes the back, um, the gaps in between the back piece look nice. Um, yeah, I don't want this to go out of control financially as well. So the hope was, maybe this is a little business I could set up a shall we? You know, if he can offer these on the island, if we can make our own carcasses, we can buy our own barbecues, we can make our own doors, um, and uh, we can make them look absolutely amazing. And is it something that people on the island might want? And uh, could be a nice little sideline for him to do. But anyway, initially it's for our own use. Um, you can't buy anything on the island like it. Um, and for the sake of cutting up a few sheets and bolting all together, and then hopefully boxing it all in and making it look great, then um, yeah, fingers crossed it'll work. I don't quite like the PVC from a biting point of view. The screws themselves, they do bite, but you can tell they don't bite as well as wood. Uh, but obviously the sacrifice is that there's no termite issues, there's no damp issues. It will be better to have it out of this. But I am concerned, screws, I'm not too sure if long term the screws with movement etc are going to start giving. Um, the other thing to do obviously is all the actual pieces themselves, because it's plastic, you could glue it. That would be absolutely solid. What glue you'd use I don't know, I mean you could probably use the actual PVC um, pipe glue. It's just literally cleansing it with the cleaner pouring loads of glue over it and sticking it together and bolting it. It's not going anywhere once you've done that. So yeah, there is other ways of doing it. Each carcass could be glued together and screwed together. Once it's glued and screwed, it's going nowhere. So that's another option. But anyway, um, I'll update you at some stage in a minute. We're gonna obviously take this back piece off here. I'm pointing. Um, take this back piece off, cut the 15 inches off, remount it, cut the other piece here into place as well. And then we've got a bit of stability. I'll go and get the wheels, screw them in. Um, let me know your thoughts. Do I go and get another two wheels for here? Because then we could have literally two pretty much on each one of the joins, which is where the weight really is going to be best supported and you've got something nice and solid to screw into. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sure by the time you see this video, I would have done it anyway. But it's interesting to know what you think. So anyway, I'm going to go and change the wheels, cut that, mount it to the back, um, get it up onto its feet, and then we can weigh up obviously what we're going to be um, bolting on around there. So it's the side panels, the top panel, um, and then we should have a white box at least. Good morning to part three. Part three of. And look who's in the house. Orin. I'm not <laughs> So, uh, okay, the wheels, the bolts. Sherwin. We're all here. Another trip, daily trip to Coimans. I love you, Coimans, but I really would like not to see you in a week if I could help it. So, um, we've managed to get some stainless steel bolts, nuts, washers. Um, they didn't have the sizes I wanted. We're gonna fit them for now on the single skin, which is the base units that we've actually built. Um, and then we're gonna test it. And if it doesn't feel still as stable as it should be, we're gonna cut another sheet and double up the base. So we actually land up with a 36 mil base rather than 18s. Um, it's quite heavy. So we're gonna put it on the wheels first, see what it's like. If it's stable, great. If it's not, then we'll put another sheet on there. Um, before I carry on gassing, if you don't mind giving me that thumbs up below and anyone that's watching it that's not subscribed, Give us a bit of a subscription that way you'll get uh, fed with more content where you can see us in the sun and you can get all jealous anyway my thought last night a barbecue gets to about 300 odd degrees and we're building these units out of pvc because we want them waterproof and low maintenance etc etc obviously we're now building it so that the actual top of the barbecue is going to sit in between the three carcasses for two carcasses obviously three in total but i'm very mindful the side of the barbecue is going to get bloody hot and it's plastic so let me know in the comments below what you think is going to happen when we fire this up to 300 degrees is it going to land up being okay or is it going to melt the plastic one of my faux pas. Anyway, as you can see, the gap at the bottom of the, of the actual unit, I'm trying to see where I am. <laughs> the gap here, that's where the barbecue is going to sit on top of it. The unit's upside down, obviously. Um, the barbecue is going to sit in this gap here, but as you can see, right near this side here and right near this side over there is where the side of the barbecue is going to sit. And this is a six burner as well, so it's going to get bloody hot. So um, in Coimans, they have nothing. I was looking for some form of fire retardedness something that will obviously deflect the heat 
they had nothing. So they had no fire blankets, they had no fire sheets, um, they had welding gloves. <laughs> In my head, can you cut those welding gloves and put the cloth down the side? Um, and then with a decorative panel, can you use some form of decorative panel um, with some form of cloth in between? Or are we gonna have to take that unit apart and change the two sides to some form of wood? Even then, it's still gonna be the same situation. It's gonna be right smack bang next to. Plastic. So anyway, let me know in the thoughts below what you think I should do. Thoughts, comments, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Because at the moment that is confusing the living hell out of me. So uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. But anyway, I think even if it was made out of chipboard or MDF or, I think it's still the same issue. Um, you know, it's gonna be bloody hot and the metal's gonna be very, very close to it. Um, but obviously, it's not gonna be combustible when it's wood or chipboard. It might burn and smell, but it won't set fire. Or the plastic may melt. So anyway, let me know your thoughts below. I'll update you as we go. We're gonna fix all the wheels, get up on top of its wheels and uh, see what it looks like. And then I'll uh, give you an update. Okay, where are we? Apart from going insane. Update. We've still got to sort out the plastic. We have a little bit of a bananaing issue, and I'll show you what that means in a second. And we're not too sure why. And we have no gap between the barbecue itself to insulate in any way, shape, or form. So we are definitely going to have to change the actual carcass walls, I would have thought. So anyway, let me spin it around and we show what it looks like. Okay. So we're looking like this at the moment. Not a bad job showing, not a bad job. Fits pretty good. We've still got to put the end panel on here. We've still now got to put the worktop on. The worktop obviously is the under piece of the worktop which will fit around here. There'll be a cut here obviously for that and a cut here for that. Um, and we've still got to put a uh, end cap into here because as we've gone bigger with the barbecue unit, obviously now the eight foot pieces are too short. So, uh, but all the wheels are in. We've used the, uh, the flush heads, um, so they sink in quite nicely. And we bought all stainless steel and we made them as long as possible because we thought we might have to go a bit deeper. So we now do have longer bolts than needed, uh, but should we ever have to do anything we can. But I'm still very, very, very concerned. Well, not concerned, obviously. I'm just very mindful this is gonna melt. Um, the burner itself, as you can see, lots of uh, burners, which is awesome. But obviously that means this is going to get red hot. I mean, maybe we could insulate here. Maybe we could insulate there, maybe. Let me know in the comments below what you think. But I think we really should be changing this skin here and this skin here. Changing those for at least wood or MDF. So it's, uh, it's more tolerant to heat. It's obviously not going to get a naked flame. It just needs to make sure it doesn't melt. But I'm pretty mindful of that is uh, definitely going to get red hot, and I would say that's definitely going to melt. So anyway, on that though, not too bad. I think you'll agree. Um, I think you know, once we've actually got it, I mean, bear on. This is just the carcass. This is this is just the actual main um, elements of the structure. We've got the doors that are meant to be being sprayed and going on. If my guy ever turns up, that is. Um, obviously, we're going to put the tops on for now to make it sealed and workable. But that'll have a Corian worktop on it with a Corian sink in here. Uh, the gas tank and everything will be in here. As you can see, we've cut this little piece out here. So it will house the electric ignition and the battery supply as well as the gas bottle in here. This will have a couple of double doors on it. Maybe one single door, depends. Probably be two doors. Um, I'd rather be one, but it's wider. Um, and um, yeah, and obviously on the back of it, we'll actually have the uh, wooden slat effect. It won't be effect, it'll actually be wood. That will be completely wooden slatted all the way along. Obviously, this Coinman's thing you're seeing here is just a... a a cellophane on there for protection so that'll all be taken off we've done all of it on the inside to ensure that there's no fingerprints and marks and dings and nicks and whatever else um we did actually buy say this little sheet here in the hope that we might be able to put something on um you know cutting that in half and maybe sliding that down the back um but again you're going to struggle to get a uh, a hair down there so yeah unfortunately that part hasn't worked so it looks like we might have to go for the painstaking exercise of pulling it all apart and changing those two inner skins painful or do we fire it up get it to heat and see what happens bear in mind once it's hot it's going to melt <laughs> there's not a great deal we can do about it 
anyway. Let us know your thoughts below. Um, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and some comments if you don't mind. And I'll check in as and we'll be put the top on and go from there. Thanks. Okay, back in, finalisation. Obviously not doors, etc. But it's all in. The end caps we cut too short from the back side. They hang over the back, so we've got like a little breakfast bar element at the back of it. Sorry for the wind. As you can see, like a little sit underneath. So obviously this is all going to be with a corin top on at some stage. Um, and we'll peel all this coin and stuff off, obviously. Um, I had to redo this end cap as well, because that was too short. Um, so yeah, all in. So apart from obviously turning it on and melting it, all good. But anyway, from a point of view of literally moving it around, as you can see, fully, the whole thing just moves completely. So we can put it anywhere. So nice little back bit there. You should be able to get, I mean, the barbecue's massive. But on the back here, you should get four or five people whilst having a few beers. Flipping a few, flipping a few prawns, mate. Um, yeah, and obviously when the weather gets bad, just literally push it away. What do you reckon? Give me a thumbs up down below. I'm not covered in white stuff at all. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Obviously, I think we're going to have to change these two skins. It's just the top bit as well. So, but I think we're going to have to change the whole inside piece here and the whole inside piece here, which means we're going to take the whole thing apart to get those two bits. Um, if you can think of anything on the island that I can buy that can slide down, let me know. But I don't think there is. I mean, looking at it, the, the units are very, very slightly being pushed over by the barbecue anyway. So the chances are there's no room down there anyway. So it is definitely going to be either, either a rebuild of unit um, or at least two skins on the outside of the other two units in the meantime to stop that burning. But anyway, that's it for now. Um, give me a like and subscribe below if you don't mind. Obviously, comments would be greatly appreciated. And any information you want or any uh, hints, if you want to attempt this yourself, let me know. But anyway, um, as and when the coinmen get the uh, Corin top in place, we can obviously start with the top. But at the moment, we can't do that until um, sheets come in. They've only got one, we need two. Um, but we will probably get the back uh, board in the meantime and get some um, some slack woods going down in the meantime. So uh, anyway, apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll check in with you soon. Thanks, thanks again, bye.